Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. So we're just going to go ahead and continue. This is episode 18. For those of you, it's like the widely anticipated episode, apparently. Uh, a lot of you guys are into it. I'm into it too. I'm really excited. Uh, you know, last episode, and this is filmed directly after. So I, you know, I don't have time, a lot of time to like sort of uh, process and like, you know, deep think what like happened in the previous episode. So we're just going to go and jump into it, you know. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you guys think. And oh. Okay, I guess I'll, I'll I'll touch on this. I guess I'll touch on this as like we go through, right? So something I find interesting in a series I'm thinking about starting. Um, you know, you guys can let me know what you guys think. I'm actually thinking of starting like a, I don't know, like a side thing. You know, it won't affect any of the uploads for uh, anime or anything like that, right? So currently, I'm also recording a uh, let's play for Metal Gear Solid and a couple of the other games that you guys recommended. So I'm gonna go ahead and like be uploading that. And soon, that's the best way I can put it, as soon as my life kind of calms down a little bit. But after that, right, something I'm actually planning, and I kind of want you guys' opinion is, you know, not as a psychologist, but more like a life coach as like a fencing buddy, whatever it may be. Um, I'm thinking about starting a, a, a series called My Story, right? Where it's essentially like through Omegle, through just people that want to talk about their story, you know, just open it up to like a discussion point, which is essentially the main question is, what is your story, right? And whoever that person is can go ahead and talk about, you know, their life experiences, so on and so forth. And of course, I navigate through uh, just questions, common questions, and, you know, how they are, where they are, where they going, what they would love, love to have learned, stuff like that. Because I think at the end of the day, you know, we're all on a different journey through life. We've all been through similar situations, similar circumstances, but... You know, sometimes we can learn from sharing parts of our story that, you know, may help another individual that's going through something similar. Um, so let me know what you guys think. If you guys like the idea, if you guys do, you know, I'll go ahead and expand on it. I'm thinking at least of dropping an episode and then like, you know, seeing your guys' reaction based off of that as well. And of course, it's like, you know, let join our discord. You know, we can chat about it. We can even like make it into something bigger. Anyway, let's go ahead and jump into episode 18. Damn. Yeah, I know. As I was saying, he is pissed. Did he just take it off? Wow. Damn, he's OP. So who could stop him? Like, that's a genuine question. Who can stop Puck? <laughs> anyway. Gluttony. Why can't yeah, why can we hear his laughter? <sighs> okay. So I can already like the amount of processing work that he did in that little period is significant, right? Um, I know some of you guys don't like it when I stop, but the reason why I stop is because while well, there are reaction channels that love to just like watch the entire thing and make snippets about it and like you know whatever, it's more important to analyze the work and transform the work as you go through, especially if you like psychology and whatnot, right? So. There's a saying in like psychology, which is essentially like before you get better, you relapse, right? So before you get started, you're going to fail, right? And I think this is really important with situations like this. I think, you know, when it comes to his own toxic behavior, his mentality, right? He has to fail a certain amount of times in order for him to start making certain advances on his own like personal development. And at the moment, you know, he's failed a lot. He's learned a lot but he's failed a lot. I just hope he doesn't give up because I think the only choice that like, you know, if a person in his situation were to like be there and be experiencing all this would be like run away or like try and start something anew. And I hope that makes sense. <sighs> the brief point was okay. I'm your rem. Oh, I'm glad he's being honest. 
Wait, what are you doing? Bro. Oh. Are you though? Those eyes say differently. Yeah. Oh no. Okay. And, and I'm stopping it here before we go on because I kind of want to bring that up, right? And I mentioned this before, which is a negative self talk and uh, schema, which is the way that we build our worldview. It, it sucks, right? Because when a person is really defeated, depressed, in a dark hole, uh, whatever it may be, it can get bad. It can get to the point where we can no longer see past the faults. Like, and this is where like cognitive behavioral therapy really comes in handy and where we can really start to build ourselves up. But like, it is absolutely like, it feels like you're drowning. It's the best way to put it. Like you're in the pool and you're drowning and like the water is like all the negative self thoughts and hatred. And, you know, even if you have social anxiety, it's sometimes that feeling where even if you're around people and people are okay with you, like, Everyone hates you. Everyone dislikes you. You're, you can't help anyone. You're tired. And this is just off of the first couple of, of things that you said here. And it, it can be a lot. It can be a lot if you're not prepared for it. And if you don't know how to deal with it. Oh no. Oh。Come on, bro. You don't think she hasn't thought about all of this? Right? Oh no. Bro, you're not powerless though. You've done. Bro, like no one has ever needed you and she's right there. Amelia needs you, like 90% of these individuals do. Oh no. An ultimatum. Guys, let me t let me tell you guys a little bit something about this, right? And, like, I'm pretty sure you guys can tell just by the way I'm talking. Like, it affects me a lot because, like, you know, we've all been through shit in life. And, like, I was someone that also, like, grew up with a lot of negative self-talk, especially after a situation that happened to me. Like, my negative self-talk, my schema grew to the point where it was unreasonable, right? So, the reason why I bring that up is because, like, sometimes... You know, you, you need that slap of positivity. You need that person to be that, like, real, like, sort of that wall, that, like, foundation that can really help you grow as an individual and can really push you to uh, just do amazing things and be who you want to be and grow how you want to grow. But, like, probably going to be a very emotional episode, so I'm going to try and uh, phrase this as good as I can. Um, when you give an ultimatum, Right. And this goes for anything, right? Especially attachment wise. Things will never go the way you want them to. Especially when you're already in that setting. Like, you know, choose now or never, right? And it's like things aren't black and white. They and it's it's the schema. Again, like let's if we if we go back to it, it's essentially the schema that he's built up or he feels trapped. You know, he's between a rock and a hard place, and he's been like that for a while now. Now that it's all coming out, it's like, how do you move? How do you choose something, right? Or it's, yeah, it, that's the best way I can put it. And ultimatums are just, you know, you're trying to force a person to make a decision that would probably have worked out better if you phrased it differently. Like, for example, he. He's opening up beautifully, don't get me wrong. I praise him for actually being able to open up and express himself and do all of this. But I'm pretty sure if he was like, run away with me because I care about you, because I love you, 
because of, I don't know, a thousand and one things, you know, and like, we can take it step by step. Like, you know, I'll let you make the first move, whatever. Right. Instead of it's now or never, you know, I have, no one cares about me. No one, blah, 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 blah. He just installed this like wall that he can't see past a certain amount because he's afraid of what's come, what's to come next. And granted, I'd probably be afraid too, but that's, you know, you have to take a risk and you have to take on risks. It's something that you can gamble on, I guess. Yeah, bro. I know. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, because that was sort of my thing. Is she, she's had it thought out, like just her attachment and the way that she is. But fuck that, don't matter. <laughs> Oh God, guys. What is this show? <laughs> what do you guys have me watching? <laughs> Yeah, bro, but you can't. I don't know what I'm still tearing up. Like, damn. Okay, I'll try and. Uh, that went longer than expected. That was a. <laughs> so, um, yeah, breaking that down. She, like as I said, she probably thought about all of this. And it's not so much, why don't you choose me? And I think you probably asked that of the wrong person, Subaru. You know, with her, it's more like, you know, if. Again, it's this attachment thing and the schema thing. It's like, in her eyes, you were the savior, this individual that, like, actually went through and saved her from whatever thing that, like, happened to her. Right. And you sort of set up this precipice that like you are an individual that she can rely on that even when stuff gets hard, you stand up and you fight for what's right. And now that stuff has gotten hard, you've given up. And as an individual, I don't think like if this was someone you cared about and like you saw that they were giving up because of issues or whatever, and they're just like, let's run away together. Would you accept? I think you would want a person that like, like, like she says, that would laugh with you that like, is there because they want to be there, not because of the circumstances given. And this is one of the hardest things to accept as an individual. And this is like through a sociological lens, right? When I like look at it or even through a psychology lens through like a couple's lens, like you want the best thing for your partner as a complete individual. 
it in like it's it's oddly probably one of the most like non REM things that you could do while still being REM because like look sorry guys it's just when I when I cry it like runs everywhere it's ugly cry that's the best way I can put it and I'll probably have edited a good portion of that but like <laughs> um. Yeah, no, as an individual, like, you know, if you're going through something like that, you want your partner to be the best that they can be. And the reason why I say that it's the most non-REM thing that she can do is because, like, uh, like, while still being REM, it's because she sort of is speaking of, like, good now. Not really of good, but, like, of his strength, right? His resolve that he showed earlier, she sort of picked up and has embodied and has been like been like, I'm here for you. Like, you don't have to do this alone type thing and i don't think he just un quite understands that just yet but you you kind of have been for a lot of people wow <sighs> but who says you have to carry it alone Talk about spiking up my anxiety here, damn. No. I don't... Yes. Okay, I'm stopping this just like in pieces because I want to analyze it and it also gives me time to breathe because that's a lot of energy just being directed, you know, and also because I kind of don't want to break down again. <laughs> One ugly cry is enough for me. So, okay, so a good portion to redirect this, right, especially with the like negative schema and everything that's at, like he's sort of like redirecting it towards is just pushing back on it, right? So clearly, like, for example, if you were doing this, right, any of you guys were doing this and I have an image of who you are as an individual, you can be like, you know what, I'm empty, I'm a hateful individual that blah, 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 blah. And I just push back with like, although you may think about yourself as a hateful individual to me, you are an individual that strikes empathy and love and compassion because of what you have done. Like, you know, blah, blah, A, B, and C that has shown this, you know, I am an individual that nothing I do, I can ever do right. But to me, you are an individual that does the right things. You know, when given the chance you've done blah, A, B, and C for me, right? You, and you just continue down this path and it's it's a form of cbt right which is essentially like writing down the pros and cons examining the evidence is probably what what it's going to be redirected towards um through a multi like lens theory right so it's probably one of the most effective ways to go ahead and like attack a theme a schema like this because I think I can, I don't want to make an assumption and speak for everyone, but a majority of people have gone through something like this, which is where, you know, we've gone to a point where we have this negative schema set on ourselves and it's hard. It is hard to get rid of, and it can even impact our social settings, how we advance, how we even make decisions.
No, you're not. <laughs> I feel like I'm not commenting much or saying anything because I'm just, like, impacted. <laughs> I don't... What a perfect way of showing it. I... I'm just, like... Quite literally mind blown by it. <laughs> Here, we're just gonna finish it off, then I'll give you my thoughts, cause I believe in you. And I love you. Nope. 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 <laughs> Oof. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Quite literally, like, the best version of what could have happened, like... I'm sorry, but can I find this version of Ren, like, anywhere in a human being? That would be amazing. <laughs> and the purpose would just be like, I love Amelia, man. You know, you're just, like, you're helping me out, but... <sighs> yeah, dude, you're, like, driving in a stake. But okay, I get it from your attachment, but... He's reaching out for help! Oh my god, finally! <laughs> Bro, get a hug at least. <sighs> there we go. So y'all did not, I guess I I can understand why this is like one of the most impactful episodes out there and why you guys keep, kept like, I can't wait for episode 18. Yeah, except I didn't really have much to comment or say because you broke me like four or five times. Like, thanks guys. Honestly, it's kind of embarrassing to cry on camera, but like, wow, thanks. Much appreciated. <laughs> but honestly, like, if there's a good, like, good summary of how of course, not all therapy, but like some therapy, especially when it comes to schemas, would look like. I think that's a great example right there. And then, um, it can be very impactful to have that, especially have someone in your corner that definitely supports you, definitely cares about you, and definitely pushes you forward. And I think, and this might sound weird, but I think Rem was being strong for him because, as I said, that is the most Rem non Rem thing to do. Because, like, I'm pretty sure any other situation she would have probably ran off with him, right? Because, like, her attachment, her attachment style and the way that she is as a character would be like, let's go. Like, fuck it. Like, you know, like, because it's sort of that hero thing where she wants the best for him. But, you know, as I mentioned before, you're trying to find that individual who is also working on themselves, who is a complete individual, not really a complete individual, but, you know, they're in the process of working on themselves or being working for whatever makes them happy, so on and so forth, right? Where it's like, they're not doing it out of pity or because they feel like there's no way out. And oftentimes those relationships, like especially if you get into a relationship where you feel like there's no way out, can become very toxic really quickly. And I think this is one of those examples where it just... And, and I wonder, right? I, I wonder how much the author has studied into some forms of psychology, because that was a really good example of CBT mixed in with some psychodynamics, like zooming in, zooming out, zooming in, zooming out, right? Um, because it was like, you know, he kept, like, the different points of pain that kept happening and the way that she kept rephrasing it, which is like, yeah, you know, I understand this, but in my image, it's this, you know, like... You might hate yourself, but I'm here for you and I love you. Like, and I think majority of us or majority of people in general, you know, we're 
really in the strive to find the partner that is there for us as a complete individual. And even if sometimes we fail, we stumble and whatever it may be, like having that person there that can, you know, that you can find, you can call home or whatever they like they may be, right? Like we always want them to succeed in life and be the best version of themselves that they can be. And I think that this like this episode really strove for that. And it's probably one of the most impactful episodes that I've seen in ReZero. I mean, it made me tear up, guys. We're not going to take it that far, right? But again, like if you guys are in, in a dark hole, if you guys are feeling desperate and like anxious filled or whatever, please seek out a therapist, guys. It is, you know, I hate to I hate to put it out there, but like getting into a relationship for relationship to relationship, it's not a good way to go ahead and work out your issues. Find a therapist near you. Find someone that can definitely help. Um, you know, a professional or whatever it may be. With that being said, I really appreciate you guys. I'm actually going to take some time, process, drink some water, walk, because that was one hell of an episode. <laughs> I mean, I'm glad because, like, you know, you could really feel the tension as the episode kept going and, like, the release at the end. It was very, very well-paced. Probably one of my favorite episodes in anime so far. So I'll give it that. With that being said, guys, practice some self-care. Let me know what you guys do for self-care down in the comments. Um, and as I said, you know, I'm going to be starting a whole My Story series. Uh, let me know if you guys would be interested. Join the Discord. It's going to be down in the description below. Hit like and subscribe and share it with all your friends. And yeah, as embarrassing as it may be to cry on camera, you know, if it helps one person understand that it's okay to cry, you know, even as a male, you know, or whatever, as an individual just putting themselves out there into the vast void of the internet know that it's fine it is perfectly okay and i think a majority like if i felt this way it i it's because i empath i genuinely empathize with the majority of the characters right like i will put myself in those shoes and draw from my experiences and like be like oh damn like this hits home right but for other individuals like you know it's okay like we all experience emotions differently and whatnot but it's okay to go ahead and share those emotions anyway Love you guys so much. Practice some self-care, and I will see you guys next time, episode 19.